get off social media. If I, and honestly, I mean this with all of my heart. If your kid, if your child is under a certain age, and I mean like 16 and below, maybe even 17, maybe even 18, because your brain is not fully developed as an adult until you're about 20 something years old. Hi, I am Bruce Wayne Brackett, and I'm so excited to be here with the Beyond Risk and Back Parenting podcast. I'm so excited to be here with all of you. And I just want to provide some inspiration and hope. I know that there is a lot of struggle with parenting and our younger generation, but it's not about the motivation. It's about the inspiration, because that is what brings us forward in our self-motivation. So it's really about finding things that bring you joy, finding things that you can identify with, and finding things that can really dig deep in yourself that you can let loose and let your light shine and be bright and be you. There are 8 billion people on the planet, and if you are willing to identify just with yourself, you are impacting so many people that you really don't really even realize that you're impacting. So if you can be you authentically, 100%, you are not only showing up and saving your own life, but you're helping others realize that you can overcome and recover from whatever trauma, addiction, abuse, whatever it might be, you can hold that moment for yourself and push that out in the world with love and positivity and show others that they can overcome and recover. And that's my entire mission. Bruce, is it true that this authenticity, this willingness to be yourself in spite of, despite of the world around you, was this a hard one concept or did this come easily to you or was doing it natural and the source of your punishment and consequences? All of the above. It was really a huge impact for me to realize for myself because I struggled I was really challenged as a youth to hide who I was. And then it wasn't until I was able to find that spark and that light in myself that I was able to get out of my own way and take the time for myself to realize if I can be myself, if I can be genuinely happy with who I am, it doesn't matter what other people think. It really doesn't. And it took a lot of time. It took a lot of struggle. But eventually, through all of that struggle, I was able to follow suit because I held on to that light inside of me to push me forward. And then eventually, it resonated with a lot of people. It took a lot of therapy. It took a lot of patience. It took a lot of love that I was not willing to accept for myself. One of the things that really was hard for me was having my adoptive parents say, and remember, you are loved. That triggered something in me that I felt like I was not worthy of because I was brought up before I was adopted. I was brought up feeling like I was so easily discarded, let go, rejected. The amount of bullying that I went through in elementary, junior high, and even high school, I felt like I was not loved enough, that I wasn't worthy enough. And then eventually through therapy and through a lot of just my own life experiences that I realized it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people's path might bring them to. My path is my own journey, and that is worth so much more than anyone else's experience for myself. We can all relate. We can all find compassion and love for each other. But with that connection with the community of other people, It really took a lot of patience, a lot of love, and a lot of self-work, shadow work, just being my authentic self 
I found my peace, I found my truth, and I found my self-worth. It takes a lot. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Risk and Back. Thank you so much for joining me today on this show. I have Bruce with me, and we're going to talk about influencing. We're, let's, let's confront this concept of what our kids are looking at when they go online, these influencers, because Bruce is one of them. But you can hear in the intro the positivity, the, the hope how much he cherishes his own self and how he has found empowerment from that. But how do you transfer that type of energy? Is he some enigma in the universe of happiness? And if he's adopted, if he has these struggles as a kid, if he's been through the experience, the horrendous traumatizing experience of being bullied, at what point do you realize it doesn't matter and how do you convince yourself? So we're going to ask Bruce these questions. We're going to get Bruce's answers. So parents, teachers, clinicians, welcome to another amazing episode, if I do say so myself, of Beyond Risk and back. Thank you so much. Please step on over to Apple Podcasts and give us a review if this show is helping you with your teenagers because it helps other parents help their teenagers. Let's get on with Bruce W. Brackett, a influencer. Bruce, you said earlier that it doesn't matter. And the first argument that teens are going to have, the first argument that parents of teenagers are going to have is that's hard to believe because it seems like it does. Now on this side of life, adults, we can look at a 14 year old and go, it doesn't matter what they think. But when you're 14 and that's all you have is them and their opinion, our identities developmentally. And this is important for parents to understand. It is developmentally necessary for other people to have influence over us so that we can pull away from our prime influencer unit, our family, our prime rearing unit, our prime source of perhaps pain and suffering, but we have to pull away from our parents to figure out who we are. And our only model of that is other people. We ultimately say as teenagers, I'm going to be me by not being you. But our only model for not being our parents is other people. So first and foremost, how did you realize that it didn't matter? And how on earth do we help teenagers understand that it doesn't matter when everything around them seems to prove that it does. Thank you for this question. This is really huge and pivotal in a teenager's environment. I was that teenager that I ran away from home when I was 16, and I introduced myself to reintroduce myself to drugs and alcohol. I was born into detox. The first few cognitive years of my life really showed me on a fake facade that I was not worth it, that I was easily discarded. And it took a lot of therapy. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of my own life experience to show myself that it really doesn't matter what other people think of me. I had so many people in elementary and junior high bully me and say that I was a faggot or that I was queer or that I was disgusting. And it really took some life experience. And my life experience showed me that I was really talented. I was a singer, actor, dancer, and I found theater in that. And then I started to find my friends. After years of not having people that would connect to me, I found my way through my creativity to show me, ah, I'm worth something. And I had a lot of love and encouragement from my parents to reassure me that I was loved. It doesn't matter what other people think of me. If I am true to myself, beyond all reasonable doubt, if I'm true to myself, I will access and achieve my greatest life. 
granted, for me, it took a lot of years for me to see that. But eventually, if I kept following that path, it came true. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of patience. But oh my God, is it worth it? It is worth it. If you can have unconditional love, an open mind for your child, which my parents provided me, they didn't question me about being gay. They didn't question me about what it is that I wanted to do. I wanted to go into the arts. And a lot of parents are like, well, can you make money off of that? Like, are you going <laughs> to actually be successful? Well, yes. Yes, because you gave me that love and you gave me that encouragement. And that ignited a fire within me that I followed all the way, all the way. So I think, and I don't have children of my own, but I put a lot of thought into this if I had my own children, what would I give them to allow them to achieve their better self? And it's unconditional love, it's truth, it's encouragement, it is undoubted support, and it's acceptance of what it is that they visualize for themselves because parents are not living their children's lives. The only one who's living their life is their child. So if you can support them and encourage them in whatever they want to do, they're going to flourish in that. It's so important. When did you discover theater art as an outlet for your passion, your energy, your happiness? I was about seven years old when I first auditioned for a children's theater company called Missoula Children's Theater Company. And I got casted in the role of Sing Sing Sam in Treasure Island. And someone in the audience was a scout for Ted Turner, who hosts and gives money for children at that time for their own creativity. And they sponsored me and they paid for my own singing lessons. After that point, I realized oh, I'm good at something. I'm actually good at something. And it was at a young age, and I took that by the balls. I grabbed it, and I just ran with it. And then eventually, I was casted in so many different shows. Um, I was a leading role in The Emperor's New Clothes. I was a leading role in Oliver. I was Oliver Twist. I did a few tours in Montana, and it really showed me that I was good at something. And then I eventually realized that I had really good movement. Oh, maybe I'm a dancer. Okay. So I dove into that and I got a role and an apprenticeship in a dance academy in Montana that is a leading dance academy, the Dynamic Dance and Tumbling Academy that really pushed me forward in my performing arts. And then that really ignited the ability for me to go and move to New York City at 18 years old and start auditioning for Broadway shows. And although it took a long time, eventually, after a lot of consistency and a lot of hard work, I landed an off-Broadway show. And it was amazing. It was rewarding. It was also a struggle because of my past trauma and addictions. Self-sabotage came into play where I felt like I wasn't worthy enough of that experience. And it took a lot of therapy. Again, therapy is not only for the sick and suffering, it is for everyone. And I allowed that to be a part of my life. And because of the professionals that worked with me, I was able to get through that and overcome and allow myself to arrive at that platform of a shining light for myself to be able to do a full off-Broadway show. So it takes a lot of hard work, but that's something that you, the individual, needs to realize for themselves 
that they are worth it. Even if you're not doing theater, just as yourself as an individual, if you're overcoming from mental health or addiction or trauma, that you can overcome and recover and access a higher level of yourself. It's huge. Allow yourself that opportunity to grow and to be. Hey folks, it's time to pay the bills using this podcast. So we have created our first subscriber slash membership program here. The different levels of membership include an extra show that no one else is gonna get access to, free calls that you can join me and guests live with Q and A's, coaching sessions with me, merch, so much more. Please go to ko-fi.com slash beyond risk and back. That's ko-fi.com slash beyond risk and back. And check out what we got for you there. Let's talk about influencing on all your social media channels. I've been going through some of them. You've got a lot of followers. You're doing very well. One of the things I like to find out about people who have a social media presence is what's the gig? What, what is it that you're trying to actually promote? I don't know the formula. I don't know why it works. I do know that being honest and true to yourself allows other people to access a point within themselves that they can do it too. I started on social media about 2021, and within the first month, I had 60,000 followers on TikTok. And then it blew up from there. And within the first four months, I had about 300,000 followers. And it's because I was sharing my own truth, my own experience, my own hope, my dreams, my goals. Did you share about your problems? Did you share about the struggle as a child? Did you share about that stuff too? Or is it all oh, just yeah. the, the positive, you're so awesome and beautiful, go get it? Oh, no. No, 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 no. It's not all about positivity. Because with positivity comes negativity, comes the doubt, the self-sabotage, unworthiness, well, and the haters in the feed, like, like uh, people are going to show up there to troll and people are like, oh yeah, how does, does that strike or trigger any of the past shit to come up? And it honestly fuels me more to keep doing what I'm doing because <laughs> the, the negative comments, which I'm very fortunate for, I don't get a lot of hate. I, I, I don't because they put out so much love and so much optimism and hope that it doesn't allow a lot of negativity because of that manifestation i'm with every post that i put with love and hope and inspiration it really minimizes the amount of negativity or hate that comes in so i'm really fortunate that i don't have a lot of hate of course it comes in from time to time and i just accept it I just allow it. I realize that hurt people hurt people and healing people heal themselves and others. So if someone's going to come to me with a lot of hate, which happens, I realize that I need to hold compassion for that person because they're in pain and they want me to feel that pain with them. If I don't allow that and I combat that with love, the hate stops. How come as a hurt person growing up, you didn't hurt people? Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. No, I did. Absolutely. I lied. I stole from people. I used people to get high on drugs, alcohol, sex, you name it. I really took advantage of people and I hurt people in that process because I was hurting. And once I realized for myself, I wanted something better for myself, I had that light within me. I held on to that light and I reached out for help. Eventually, it took over to the point where I was sick, I was suffering, I was overdosing, I got STDs, I got HIV, I was 
almost borderline AIDS with pneumonia and acute hep C in the hospital for 10 days. And it took a lot of resting. It took a lot of self-navigating for myself to realize I have that light inside of me that wants something more beautiful. Once I held on to that, my life changed. And I started to put out positivity in my own life. And then I applied that to a social media platform. And to see that manifestation come true and the result of that come true, oh, it was off to the races. I just held on to that and put it out there. And are you just talking about, it's like you finally got the positive reinforcement you've always been craving because you were starting to be a positive person about the fact that you're adopted, you've been bullied, you've been struggling with addiction, you know, you're, that, that, that choices you have made with, with sexuality and partners have led you into a place of a very risky place, but you're positive and suddenly positive comes flowing back. Is it that simple? Is it that easy? Is this just you saying, I got to be nicer and the world's going to be nicer to me? Or is there something else going on? No, absolutely. I, I feel like if you really sit down, you shut up, you listen to what the universe is trying to provide to you because the universe is always trying to give you something. And if you can sit down, shut up, and listen to that, you are going to achieve greatness. And once I tuned into that, my life changed unspeakably for the better. My life blew up in a way that I did not even realize was possible for me. I dreamt of it, but I didn't really believe that it was true. And then ignoring that, I went with it anyway. The proof is in the pudding. It is amazing what happens. I was 18 years old when I moved to New York City and I sat down and I had a huge goal for myself. I was like, I'm going to write a memoir. I'm going to write a book sharing my own experience. I started that book and I wrote 150 pages. I don't know if that's the actual page amount, but I wrote a lot. And then I fell back into the darkness. And I put that dream on a shelf and I self-sabotaged and I fell back into addiction and sex work and everything negative. And my life, because I fell into that, was giving me nothing but negative. And then once I asked for the help, I accepted the help and I showed up for the help, my life changed. And then I started to accept that and embrace that. And I started putting that out into the world. Fast forward, 14 years later, I become sober from crystal meth, all hardcore drugs. Now I'm approaching 10 years sober from hardcore drugs. It took a long time. It took a lot of help. It took a lot of acceptance, but I accepted it. And with the encouragement and the love from my followers, which I thank you from the bottom of my heart, all of my heart, from all of that acceptance, I found that light again. So I picked up the book and I continued writing it. And within four months of me showing up and writing that book, I got an email from one of the largest publishers in the world. Hey, have you ever considered of writing a book? I was like, yeah, I'm actually in the middle of that. And then I signed a huge celebrity contract deal with this publisher. And my book is being pushed out into the world to hundreds of thousands of people. And it's coming on pre-sale very soon. And because I showed up and I worked hard and I let go and I put it to the universe and I continued working and moving forward, that manifestation happened and they came to me. So that that's another huge proof in the pudding that the universe is real. Gods are real. A higher power is so powerful in realizing that I'm not the only one that's going through this. And if I can show up and write this book, not only for my own self-healing to get it out on paper, but also to realize and to let loose to other people 
that they too can overcome and recover was huge. And it just happened by the grace of God, by the higher powers. And now it's being published. I'm already considered for a New York Times bestseller. It's unbelievable what happens when you just shut off the opinions of others and you follow your own truth and you take the love and encouragement from your family, from your parents, from your friends. And you take that and you harness that and you keep moving forward inch by inch little tiny goals each day accumulate to a lifelong achievement that you thought you were never even capable of. And that happened to me. And now my book, How to Breathe While Suffocating, is coming out and being published internationally. And it's next to becoming sober, one of the biggest things I've ever done in my life. And I am so grateful, I'm so humbled, and I'm so thankful to be able to have that release. It's huge. Why you? Of, of all the people who go through the struggle that you go through, why you? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I am very grateful. Again, I'm very grateful. I'm humbled. But I do think, again, if you have a little bit of light within your core, right here, that self-worth, that self-love, if you have that, which all of us do, hold on to it with all of your might and follow it because the rest of the negativity will be gone. You will keep moving forward. It's not a race. There's no timeline. This book took me 14 years from start of writing the first word to actually signing the book deal, to having it published, it took 14 years. There are people who struggle their whole life and they don't make it on terms of success, whatever success means to you, because everyone's avenue and path is completely different. Your definition of success is up to you. And to have that and realize that the amount of work that I've done to where I started, to where I'm at now, it's unstoppable. What did your parents think during your dark years? How did, how did they, or did they hold on to positivity or were they lost in, you know, we, we, don't you know that you're loved? Remember that you're loved. We've given you everything. You had nothing without us. I know maybe they didn't say that, but that is, in, in all the years of working with adoptive families, that is one of the things that, that I hear. It's like, ah, how come they can't see what we've given? What did your parents think, and how did they act during all these years of, what the hell, is he going to make it? Is he going to survive? Because you're thriving now, but did they hold on to the light for you or were they lost too? I think it was a bit of both. I think that they were really grief stricken by the amount of pain that I was causing myself because they knew that I was unstoppable. They knew from a very young age of my life that I had so much potential. So they held on to that and I'm sure that they were in immense pain seeing me hurt myself and hurt others and even hurting them in the process. Because when I'm hurting myself with drugs and alcohol, I'm not only hurting myself, but I'm hurting everyone that loves me. They went through that. I caused them a lot of pain, but they were always there. No matter what, they were always there. And whether it was tough love or anger or grief, or motivation to push me forward. They gave it all. They were honest. They gave it all to me. They told me that they were in pain. They told me that they were disappointed. They told me that they were there for me. And they showed up for me in many ways. When I first got diagnosed with HIV, they showed up the next week in New York City from Montana, and they spent two weeks with me just to make sure I was okay. They went to any lengths to push me forward, no matter the pain. It was huge. 
it it was life saving. It was huge. How do you come up with material for influencing? Do you always come back to your own story? As as I'm as I've I've got you. I've got a window off to the side that I'm watching your TikTok videos on silent. They're very energetic and uh, and 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 I'm wondering, like, how do you come up with this? How do you know what your audience wants to hear from you, or is it all trial and error and you know, oh, you only got 646,000 likes on this TikTok, so maybe it wasn't so good. How do you know? So I have a formula, a formula of three. Is this true? Is this something that I want to put out into the world? And is this going to be helpful for others? So a lot of it comes back to my own life experience and my own journey. And I share with those things that have really impacted me and things that have helped me move forward in my own life. If it doesn't fit that formula, I really try not to post it. It takes a lot of honesty and realness. And there are TikToks and Instagrams of me showing up where I'm like, hey, I'm struggling hard. Or, hey, I relapsed. Or this is the undeniable truth of addiction. I got a DUI. Hell, I got two DUIs in a matter of seven months, you know, and I, I share the honesty of it and my own experience day to day. I think Dylan Mulvaney is a huge example of that, just showing up and being honest and being your, your true self. I think Mama Ta is a huge example. I think Alethea is a huge example from that. And those are inspirations for me to realize that, again, for myself, whether it's love coming from my parents or love coming from people who influence me, I harness all of it. And I sit down, again, I shut up, and I listen to what is true that resonates with me. Because not everything is for everyone, not everyone is going to resonate with everything. And what might work for one person may not work for the other. So I sit down and I, I really just listen to that. And I see, how is this true? Is this what I want to put out in the world? And is this something that's going to be helpful? Because if it was helpful for me, I'm able to give that away. In return, help myself by giving it away because I can't keep what I have if I don't give it away. And if I see, which every single day I see the results of people commenting and messaging me, the hundreds of messages and emails of people being like, hey, you just saved my life today, or you inspired me to do something better. It's so rewarding. It's so beautiful, and it motivates me and it inspires me to keep moving forward. I have days where I really struggle, especially this last week. I was really down in the dumps, depression, everything, struggling with my own sobriety and questioning my worth and self-sabotage and that imposter syndrome. But if I'm willing to sit down and listen to people who have inspired me or people who are doing things that I want to do, aka mentors. Mentors are huge. If you can find someone that can mentor you into your better existence, follow that. Oh my God, it is so valuable and not replaceable. So I do. I sit down and I listen to that and I just keep trying to do the next best thing. I, ju I just keep trying to be better than what I was five seconds ago. If I can be better than what I was five seconds ago, I'm going to be even undeniably better in my future. And my future is what inspires me. But the now, being in the present and being in the now is what keeps that humble and what keeps that real and what keeps that true for my own experience. Everyone is going on their own journey. And if, if people get sidetracked from that and they start comparing themselves to other people, you will become bitter. If you compare yourself to yourself, you will become so much better. What would you tell parents who are so sick and tired of their kids 
doom scrolling on TikTok, and you know because because you're <laughs> let's let's be honest, you know TikTok has a lot of bad press, and uh, I love Instagram. I'm a big redditor. But what would you tell parents? Oh, my kid's on TikTok all day long. How would you tell a parent that, well, since they're there, give them my <laughs> URL, my my handle, my – because, I mean, you're televising your journey, and it's it's positive. Yeah, You can't listen to this show. You can't listen to you talk no matter what you're talking about. I feel a sense of hope. You feel a sense of hope. So what would you tell parents about their kids on too much social media? Get off – Social media. If I, and honestly, I mean this with all of my heart. If your kid, if your child is under a certain age, and I mean like 16 and below, maybe even 17, maybe even 18, because your brain is not fully developed as an adult until you're about 20 something years old. What is your child doing on social media where it is a world of influence, where there's positive, negative, sexual, addiction, all of these things? Why are you allowing your child to be on social media when they don't even know who they are? They haven't even experienced life. Why are you allowing your child to have all of this exposure in the real world, because the real world is putting itself on social media. And as we see, and as we know, the real world is 50-50. There's a lot of great things. There's a lot of really dark things. Allow your child to still be in their childhood until they are ready to move out to move out of the house, to move. And even when someone moves out of the house, I was 18 years old and I still wasn't ready for it, you know? So it's not about censoring your child. It's about protecting them and having an open, honest communication with them that, hey, this isn't the safest place. The world is really dark. I say negativity be gone all the time. It doesn't mean that negativity does not exist. It's very real. If it became a rule that you you couldn't be on social media until you left the house, we'll just use your term. I love that. <laughs> how much how much of your audience would you lose? Honestly, um, not that much because really, the, yeah, no. The majority of my audience is uh, people who identify as female, and the majority of the people who follow me are about twenty-five to forty years old, and then there's a small percentage of younger or older. So. I'm very happy with where I'm at because I'm reaching my targeted audience of people that I want to influence. Yes, I want to empower the youth to protect themselves and to be safe and make wise decisions. But after my video and they scroll and they see something else, I have no control over that. So I would lose maybe about 7% percent a, a small amount also a very important amount a very important amount and when i was 14 15 16 years old i was that person that was lost and looking for anything to relate to and i unfortunately found drugs sex alcohol and all of those things but i was looking for that so you can protect your kid, but even with the protection of my adoptive parents, I still went full beyond to find the things that were going to get me in trouble. Are you a mentor? I am, yes. Is that how you see yourself? Is that how you see your work? Is that you're here to mentor people through their journeys? Yes. I see myself as a mentor. I see myself as an inspiration. I see myself who is going through my own struggles every single day. I'm, if anything, I mean, I, I have people that come up to me and they're like, if it's not the famous Bruce W. Brackett, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not famous. I want to remain humble. 
I want to remain in a place where I can always grow as a human being. I think that a level of fame, and I'm speaking very truthfully to you, will kill me. I think that I will eventually get to a place, and I'm, I'm not manifesting this, but I think if I don't stay humble and if I don't stay real, I will pull an Amy Winehouse. I will go down that road if I'm not humble. So yes, I'm a mentor. Yes, I'm an inspiration for those who see that. I'm also a human being that makes mistakes. I'm not perfect. I'm far from perfect. I am just a human being on the planet that is publicly showing their life. And I don't take the positive influence from that, and I don't take the negative influence from that. I just keep doing what I think might be helping myself and what might be helping others. Uh, Wanna? I got one more question for you, but before I ask that question, I want to make sure that people have every single one of your handles for all your social medias and your websites. Look, Bruce, that panda picture on your website is one of the most adorable oh. pictures of a panda I've ever seen in my life. Oh, your thank art, you. Your artwork is spectacular. Um, I wish I had a forever home right now so I could buy one of your pictures and keep it there. Uh, I don't. My wife and I travel a lot all over the world. I'm in Mexico right now. Um, <clears throat> but that your 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 artwork, is your portraits, your celebrity portraits, your animal portraits – but I'm a big animal guy, so I love the panda picture the most. So let's give everybody where they're going to follow Bruce, the, where they're going to follow, if it isn't the famous Bruce W. Brackett, <laughs> after the show. Where do they find you? Thank you so much for that. That really means the world to me. I, I put my portrait art on pause as I was writing my book. Um, but my website is bwbart.com. And you can order custom portraits, whether it's animal or memorial portraits or just a portrait of your, your most inspirational person that you want me to paint. Uh, that's bwbart.com and all of my social media, whether it's on threads, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Patreon, Cameo, it's all bwb.positivity. And I would be happy and honored to paint a portrait of whatever it is of your choosing. So just let me know. And for speaking engagements, for motivational speaking engagements, you can email me and book me through bwbspeaks at gmail.com. Bruce, talk about uh, how to breathe while suffocating, when it's going to be released, where we can find it. So the pre-release, I don't have a date for yet, but I do know that the actual publication of the book being on the shelves in Barnes & Noble, Amazon, anywhere the books are sold, will be in April 2024. And April is a huge month for me. I was nominated for the Cheer Choice Awards this upcoming year. In April, I'm going to Las Vegas to just celebrate all of the positivity influencers that are putting out love and positivity in the world. And I was very honored to be nominated again this year. And during that month, my book is going to be internationally put out into the world. It's really exciting. I'm very humbled and honored to share my experience, strength, and hope in overcoming from addiction, trauma, and abuse. And I just really want to remind everyone that no matter what it is that you're facing, no matter what situation you were going through, if you have that honor and that love for yourself, which takes a lot of work, but if you have that, you can overcome anything that you were facing in your life and you can achieve greatness. Bruce, my final question is, you're 14 years old now and you're scrolling TikTok, you're on Instagram, and you find the one and only Bruce W. Brackett there. As a 14-year-old, how would Bruce have changed your life? 
Wow. Oh my gosh. I've never been asked that question. Hopefully I would find, not hopefully. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to internalize that and I'm going to take that in. How would that impact my life? I would no longer feel alone. I would accept the love of a stranger on the internet to show me that I can overcome no matter what situation I'm in, whether my parents accept me or not, that I can be who it is that I truly want to be and that what I desire to be. And whether I have their acceptance or not, it doesn't matter. Because whether it's your parents, a relative, a friend, or a stranger, no one's opinion of you matters as much as your own belief in yourself. If you have that belief in yourself, you can take on the world, baby, and keep moving forward. You can, and it's gonna take time, it's not gonna happen tomorrow, but if you keep moving forward, greatness is coming your way and you're worthy of so much good, and so much good is coming your way. Parents, in a lot of my lectures that I do, we explore contemplations of the dualistic nature of things that we all agree on and take for granted. Your ego is designed to protect you from pain. So ego is good, but it's also bad because, you know, breaking up with someone is painful and you remember that pain. So your ego keeps you from asking someone out, right? Uh, your ego keeps you in a job or a relationship that may not feel good because at least that discomfort is something that you can plan on and expect when going out and starting your own company is unknown and the unknown is scary and maybe the fear of that is bigger than the fear of the pain that you're in by staying at that job you hate, right? There's, there's a dualistic nature to common concepts and I think influencers also need to be placed in that category. Yeah, we see children and adults spend too much time on social media, doom scrolling, but there's another aspect to scrolling that we must consider, and that's hope scrolling. That there are people out there looking for hope and looking for an answer. And when they come upon someone like Bruce, where you say, wait a minute, I'm okay. He's okay. I'm going to be okay. If he can do it, I can do it. If he can wear that, and if he can be that, and he can have that, and I am have and be and wear those things, and he's happy, I can be happy. This is also part of influencing, is letting people, I mean, look, you just spent this time listening to Bruce be nothing but himself. And this is what we want for our children, isn't it? So maybe TikTok isn't all bad. I would like to thank Deepin Productions for making this podcast sound amazing. I absolutely want to thank my sponsor. Parents, you can find this podcast, my books, all my support material on parentingteensthatstruggle.com. You can book sessions with me there. And by the time this episode is out, so is my new book, The Four Prime Archetypes, Why We Do What We Do. Please find that on Amazon or on my website. And parents, as always, take care of yourselves first, your adult relationship second, and your children third, because that's how we do our best work with our children. And when you are doom scrolling, make sure you go to bwb.positivity, wherever you're hope scrolling, and follow Bruce. I'll see you next week on Beyond Risk and Back. So one thing that I wish that I could do is offer a cup of love to you and my fan clap. That's very well known. So I just want to um, say, Aaron, thank you so much for having me on Beyond Risk. And I just want to offer you a cup of love. Drink up and joy. It is all for you. And as always... Thank you for doing what you're doing because your impact is so important and you are not replaceable. And as always, negativity.